Good to see everybody this morning. We came to worship the Lord. Amen. All right, let's do it. Sing with us. Come on. Well, this is for the lost and lonely. For the broken and afraid. Well, this is for those who are hurting. Hope and help is on the way. In these battles of addiction, the fear is chasing after me. Whatever trouble I am facing, I will lift my hands and sing.
I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing in the goodness of God victory 
Well, good morning, everybody. Awesome having you with us today. Great seeing you. Those of you that are watching online, just want to also welcome you to Naples Church. Uh, One thing I'm going to ask, though, if you're here locally and watching online, please come and be a part of a a service uh, in person. Big difference between online and in person, so it'd be great to see and have you here. And those of you that are here as our guests today, thank you very much for being with us. My name is Paul Fossilene. I pastor Naples Church. And uh, it's a privilege that you came here today because I know you could have gone anywhere and you chose to be with us today. So I just believe and hope that the things that are spoken today will help you and change your life and just really assist you in your spiritual growth. Uh, I do ask though you come, you know, I want to challenge you to come at least three times if you're looking for church to call home. And please go to our welcome center when we're finished through these middle doors on the right hand side. Uh, We just have a gift for you, and people answer your questions or show you around, so thank you so much for being with us today. And also just want to say thank you again for your continued support. Uh, Last week, if you were here, we talked about our end-time giving. You know, your end giving, not end-time giving, your end giving. Hey, if it's the end times, I'm okay with that too, but hey. Um, No one knows when he's going to come back, right? I mean, nobody knows when Jesus is coming back. Um... I do, but no one else. So anyways, uh, but you know, we have a, a goal we're really believing to meet by the end of the year for our kids and our youth. Um, they are the next ones who are going to be running you know, this country, the church and everything else. And how many know we need godly people in offices? Amen. Amen. And so um, just thank you again for praying and considering and being a part to help us reach those goals. 
and just your tithes and offerings that you give. We cannot do what we do without it in everything that you do. And I just want to say thank you for just supporting us, uh, Naples Church, with your time, talent, treasure, and touch. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this offering and this time we have together. My prayer today is that the Holy Spirit would minister to each and every one of our hearts, that we'll leave here today with hope. Not just hope, but we're gonna leave here with some answers and direction how we can continue to move forward in our lives, how we continue to move on from hard spots in our lives. And so Holy Spirit, be that teacher in all of our lives today, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hello, Naples Church. I'm so excited you joined us for church today. If this is your first Sunday with us, fill out one of the welcome cards in the back of the seat in front of you and bring it to our welcome center at the end of service today. We would love to meet you. Here at Naples Church, one of our core values is everyone does the dishes. And that right there is a place for everyone to get involved. This is why we are hosting Start Here and Growth Track all in one day on Saturday, December 2nd. You'll learn about the heart and soul of Naples Church from pastors Paul and Maria, about serving on a team, and about how you can get involved. Growth Track will begin at 9.15 a.m. and childcare and lunch are provided. You can sign up online at napleschurch.com or in the Naples Church app today. For more information on all of our upcoming events, like our Holy Spirit Sunday School class, which happens next week, you can always visit NaplesChurch.com or the Naples Church app. Have a blessed week, y'all. Amen. You know, you were all given a growth track card when you came in, and um, you know, the Bible says faith without works is dead. And a lot of times in our spiritual journey of life, God leads us in stages, you know. Uh, in all the years that I've been serving him, the, you know, really how he, how you grow is like walking up these steps. You'll grow and then there'll be a season, you plateau. Not that you go backwards, but you'll just learn and you'll be growing and you're moving forward. But then God will bring the next thing into your life that you need to do. And all growth happens inside before it happens, or then you notice it on the outside. So if your marriage is gonna get better, it happens by you reaching that place where God says, now you need to take a step up if you're gonna continue to grow your relationship. And it's so true, you know. There's been probably five you know, major areas in my life, when I say major, you know, we always are growing, but like God will give, bring me to a point of, you need to change this now. And every time I've done it, the church grows, my relationships grow, I grow, and the same is true in your lives. God brings us to the point of growth. And that's what I believe this series is gonna be in many of our lives that what we're gonna learn in this series is gonna help us move on from different areas of our lives that are hurting us, that we're struggling with. And everyone, can everybody say that? Say everyone. everyone. Turn to your neighbor and say, that means you. <laughs> now turn to your other neighbor and say, you're broken. <laughs> okay? So everyone's broken. We all come from broken homes. We all come from broken families. And because of that, we're raising broken kids. And we live in a broken world. So how do we move on? How do we move forward? And that's why this series, I believe, is so, so important um, today. And as we go towards the end of the year, we, we can really look at some things to find victory and freedom in our lives but we have to open our hearts up to change. Now listen, do, you cannot sit here and find freedom if you're waiting for the person you're sitting next to to change first. Let's try that again. Let's try this side of the church. 
I heard one or two amens on this side. Nah, you guys, nah, not so good. You, will, you cannot determine your life and growth, I'm saying a little different, based on the person you're sitting next to. What, yeah, you're awesome. You guys get out on time. You guys, I got to preach to longer. But if you're waiting for the other person to change, nothing changes. We're responsible for our own growth. And so when I was putting this series together, you're going to hear me use the words moving on and moving forward together. And I was looking for, you know, like that logo, that kind of the, the backdrop of, you know, what this, the picture or, you know, the statement, whatever you want to say is going to kind of, in, you know, bring the point of what I'm getting at. And I came across a picture and I thought this would be perfect, but I didn't know if it would be appropriate to use. You guys want to put it up? And I thought, no, nah, maybe I better not use that one. But let's read the, the tagline. Moving forward can be achieved for some people only by falling flat on their face. And I read that and I thought how true that is. Why is it we don't change until we hurt enough? And how many know that looks like that hurt? Why is it we don't change until we hear the words, I'm divorcing you? Then all of a sudden it's like, I'll change. I'll do whatever. Or God doesn't even become part of the picture until something in our life gets so bad, we decide we got to turn to him. What needs to change where we don't have to fall flat on our face to move forward and to correct? And so this is what this series is going to be about. And I'm going to get more personal than I have about my own life in these areas. And some things that I've learned through the times when I've gone to counseling. And I want to share some of those with you and I'm going to share one of them with you today because I, I believe it will help you begin to realize some things and find some answers of why do I act the way I act, why do I respond the way I respond, and what's causing it. So my opening statement really for this series is simply this. Just for these first few Sundays, and it's this, what rules you leads you. What rules you leads you. And that's true in lots of areas, but I'm going to keep this pretty close to what we call spirit, soul, and body. We're a three-part being. But if money rules you, it leads you. If golf rules you, it leads you. If fishing rules you, it leads you. Because what's keeping us out of church on Sundays? What's keeping us from God? What's keeping us from coming home? What rules us leads us, but I'm bringing this to next week, spirit, soul, and body, because this is what I've learned is this, is that you have your, your spirit being, okay? Your soul is your emotions, your will, your reasoning, okay? The intellectual side and the emotional side. And then your body is, of course, your body. And if one of those doesn't join your spirit and they rule together, you'll never find freedom in your life. And you won't overcome. Because you know what I've learned is my body and my mind, they like to partner together and kick God out. So we'll look at that more next week because that's a big part of learning to move on. But let me give you an example about just as we go forward about stress. 
Now, contrary to most people's thinking, they think if they can get rid of stress, they'll be better. And that's not true. It's unresolved stress that's the problem. Because like Terry was up here and he was in the sound booth last during the service. Terry's playing his bass. The guy's talented as can be. He can play instruments and do all these cool things. But he'll be the first one to tell you that if there's not tension or stress on those strings, they don't sound good. But if it's unresolved stress, it's too much tension, they'll snap. Have you ever noticed when we have too much tension and stress, our voice goes up. We start squealing and yelling. And My wife yells at me all the time. I tell her all the time. I say, honey, quit yelling at me. And then some friends came over and her husband said the same thing to her. Quit yelling at me. So, I mean, same thing to his wife, not her, his wife. <laughs> Let me clarify that. And guys, what I've seen is this. When our wives tell us something we don't like, we say, quit yelling at us. That's what I do. When I catch myself saying, quit yelling at me, it's because she's right. Okay, we'll move on. I see that's not going anywhere today. But it's too much. So let's look at it this way. Think of something that holds a tank full of oil or something with pressure. Well, it has to be pressurized to work. But if the valve on that tank or whatever goes bad and it can't release that pressure going in, what's going to happen? You got problems. And this is what's happening in our lives, that we don't know how to get rid of stress and manage the pains in our lives. Because pain teaches us or it hurts us. And we're going to look at that. But it's important that we understand how to work through this and manage it and get rid of these things in our lives. Because even the Apostle Paul talks about this in Philippians. He says, not that I've already obtained all this or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold for me. That sounds like a lot of work. It sounds like effort. I press on. I have to take hold. Then let's keep reading. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, what? Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal. You know, somebody put it this way it's easier to maintain than regain. And I think all of us that have gotten older, we'd all say amen to that. Three of you, awesome. Why, you know. I mean, uh, I can't meddle. I don't have enough time. But it's easier to maintain than regain. And I want you to stop and think about that in our own lives. Think of what the Apostle Paul went through. He was beaten. He was stoned. He was left for dead. At the end of one of his books that he's writing at the end of his life, he has one guy that was with him. Think of all the pressures from the all the people, and even it says that in Corinthians they wrote, we wanted to die. They were so pressed on all sides. And maybe right here he's saying, I have to leave all that behind, or, and it's, I gotta keep moving forward because it's a press to leave that behind and not feel like, why did God let this happen? Why is this happening to me? This isn't fair. 
And he's even saying, I have to forget these things and I have to press towards the high calling of Christ. But it takes effort. And not just effort, but when we personally have to change, how many know that causes, causes you pain? It hurts our ego, our pride, all the things that aren't good, really, but it hurts. But we have to do it to find freedom in our lives. Now, I alluded to this already, but I, let me read this to you. To move forward, we must quit making excuses for why we can't start moving on. If we're going to move on, we have to quit making excuses of why we can't start or why we're not starting. Well, you just don't know what they did. As I was saying, when they start, I'll start. When they say they're sorry, then I'll start. One of the hardest things for me when I went to counseling was this, is sitting across from the gal and going through, you know, the things that I was struggling with and, and doing and all these different things and, and realizing that, you know, it's what I grew up in, it's other what people did to me, realizing that I had to change no matter whatever happens with them. It's my responsibility. It's my heart and my responsibility of the life I want. And she said, if you don't want that, then I can't help you. You might as well leave. Because you have to be responsible for your choices in your life. Nobody else is responsible for your decisions. That hurts. Because as the old saying goes, we vilify to justify. We put down and make other people look bad to excuse us from our behaviors. That's why Jesus said, remove the speck from your eye, I mean from your brother's eye, before you remove the plank from your eye. And when you vilify, it's just showing everybody you got a big plank. And that's why when you get around people and they talk bad about others and they put people down and they vilify them and all of that kind of stuff, they're making it an excuse to behave the way they are, to justify their behavior. And there isn't any. Because we're all responsible for our own choices and actions. And this is why gossip is so bad, is because the most dangerous truth is a partial truth distorted. False doctrine is not a danger, as much of a danger as part doctrine twisted. And that's why when people are going to gossip and say things about you and your life and different things, the reason it has some validity and effect is because they always take a partial truth of how you are, but then they twist it and make it into something way different than what's going on. And so if we're going to move on, we have to quit making excuses of why I can act the way I'm acting. Well, I'm not as bad as them. How I many know we're all rotten? Come on. We're all bad. None of us, the Bible says, we've, we're all sinners saved by grace. We all have the old nature to deal with. 
but we got to deal with it. We're never going to be perfect. And this is why in, in our own lives where when we can see truth and let God change us, we can overcome. We don't have, God can change us. It's not dependent on anybody else. We can change. We can find freedom. So we have to quit making excuses before we what? Change. You know what? I'll start dieting when I'm done with the three packs of Oreos I have in my cupboard. Amen. <laughs> double stuff. They're not Oreos unless they're double stuff. Right? Well, I'll start dieting after Thanksgiving. Well, then I'll start dieting after Christmas. Well, then I'll start dieting after the New Year. Well, then your birthday's after the New Year. So, you know, I'll start dieting after my birthday. Does that sound familiar to anybody in here but me? <laughs> you know what? I'll start dieting when the, it gets cooler in, the, in, in, in Naples. I'll start dieting when the temperature goes down. It's too hot. It's too hot. And how many know, did any of you get up early this morning, go outside? It was cold. So you know what I do now? It's like, I'd run, but it's too cold. <laughs> I don't have the right, out, you know, the, the right running gear now because I only have running gear for hot. But it's too hot for that running gear, and now it's too cold for what I have. So, you know, I just can't. Isn't that so much our human nature and our mind and how we justify and twist? And, 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 and guess what happens? We don't do it. But we're, we're all going to make progress, Right. When the new year, just don't listen to that one. So, in the next hour and a half, let me finish with this. But um, let me read you this statement: To keep moving on, you have to let go of ways we protect ourselves. This is probably one of the most important statements I can make today for us to move on. And if we're going to move on, we have to let go of the ways. Let me use another term, styles. Styles of protection that we use, that we protect ourselves. So quite a few years ago when I was looking to you know, I just came to that point, you know, just hit the wall and, and I just, ha something had to give. And so, of course, I call my spiritual mentors and start talking to them and, and they're like, you know, well, the recommendation is, you know, find a place you can go and get away and get out of your environment, find a place you can go and get counseling. And so I didn't, I called around, didn't really know anybody, you know, I mean, some of the places they had said, called around and, you know, you want to make sure you go to the right place that the Lord leads you. And so one of the things I did is I called Focus on the Family. Uh, they're just a tremendous organization with so much of the material they put out for families and kids and, you know, fat, you know marriage and Lots of great material. And so I get on the phone with this, this gentleman and um, I'm still thankful for that guy to this day and I was only on the phone with him for a very short period of time. But, it, you know, he, he just led me through something and it just helped me to begin to open my eyes. And he said, he said this, he goes, I want you to grab a piece of paper and I want you to draw a circle. I said, okay, I can do that. So I draw the circle, and then he says, at the top of the circle, write the word core. And under the word core, write the word pain. And I said, okay, I did that. And then, when he, then he went on to give me all these words to write in there. 
And he said, one of these, or a couple of them, different ones, are the reason you're in pain. Why your core, the center of you, the heart, the real you is not working. He says, now write another, right, draw another circle around that one. Make it big. He goes, at the top of it, write styles. And then underneath that, write protection. And he said, every one of us has a style or a way we act to protect ourselves when we hurt, when we're in pain. And so he gave me all these words to write down. And he said, in there, of course, we all have all of them to a point, but there's gonna be ways, styles that you will be drawn to mostly to protect yourselves. And I believe as we leave here today, there's gonna be things that you're gonna see up here of what ways each one of us operates when we get into pain. And this is one thing I know, is even though all of us have this, please remember, all of it we can work through with God's help. We all can find freedom in these areas. And so let me show you this ways we protect ourselves. I want you to think about this. So let's just stay here in the middle circle. So this is, this is the real you, the inside, what happens every day, no one sees, the core you, all right? And there's things that cause us pain. So he said that, write the word down, rejection. Shame. Maybe you were abused as a child. And you live in constant shame because of what's happened to you, the violation. That's wrong. But whether they ever, ever get judged, you don't have to let them control your life anymore. You can find freedom. How about fear? Well, I just can't have a relationship. I'm in fear. I'm this, whatever. How about injustice? How about injustice? Think of the injustice that happens in the world. You know, right around the time my wife and I got married, and and I've shared this before, but, you know, I was, you know, my, my uncle was shot between the eyes. He was murdered. And we all, you know, I watched my dad and how that affected him and, a couple months later, his, his sister, you know, just a little after that, his sister dies within a month of brain cancer. And we all have things that happen to us in our life. And at any time, we could stop and take one of those and say, you know what, I'm done caring. Or why should I serve the Lord when this stuff's happening? Now, I, knew, I never did go there. I'm just using this as an example. But we all have stuff in our example in our lives that if we don't, relieve them as we grow, there's going to be that thing that's going to send you over. So we have to relieve these things on the way and we have to deal with them. But I could say, wow, man, look at this injustice. I thought God cared for my family. Because one of the reasons that we'll see is one of the reasons we never get free is this, is that we don't, we, we are biblically illiterate. We don't know what the Bible says. So we're going to learn. How about powerlessness? Abandonment. And that ended up being the thing that was one of the, that, that, was, that was me why I was dealing with what I did over all these years and why it finally came out and 
I had to face it. Because I felt that way my whole life. I mean, when I was just a young kid and could learning to play hockey. I lived in, you know, that place called Minnesota, you know? And I would have to put my hockey gear on at home and I'd have to get on my bike in my hockey gear, carry my skate and sticks, and it's zero out as a kid and ride my bike probably a mile to two miles if I wanted to play sports. So I grew up thinking, who, my parents fed me and that was about it. And you just feel abandoned. And I didn't realize how much I grew up with these things in my life. And feeling that way. But I learned that that was a big part of why I struggled. How about grief? Inadequacy, loneliness, anger. Things that are calling your pain and now the style and the protection when inside isn't good, then we respond in these ways and we act. Even though we, listen, we all feel that we, we all do these, but there's some we do unhealthy all the time. Dependency, way too dependent on others. Workaholic. It's easier to work and self-medicate than stop and slow down. Because when you stop and slow down, that's when you realize what's inside. Success, jealous, depression, pity, poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me. Humor. And, and, and some people, they only express things in humor. It can only be about humor. It starts getting serious and it's humor. You start trying to get personal, it's humor. I just get offended because you don't like my humor. I really think there's a problem in this church. You should like it a little bit more. At least I feel that way. But that's not a mechanism for me. How about enablement? Boy, we have so many families that weren't brought up well and now they are hurting their own kids by enabling and entitlement hypersensitive should I ask should I show raise a hands in that one today but you know when when I that was something that you know we you, you, you hypersensitive about anything and everything being promiscuous, appeasement, everything. It's okay, it's okay, so I'll appease you. Yep, yep, everything, yep, yep. Because we don't want to deal with whatever it is. Resentment, anger, critical, apathy, control. Control. Got to control everything. Denial, blame, rebellion. And this is how people respond and act because of what's going on and the pain on the inside. But let me tell you, there's freedom. I want to pray for you. Would you bow your heads? I want to pray a prayer of Moses as we get ready to leave today. And I'm just believing for life to come from pain. That we can move on, move forward. Moses says, this prayer says this, teach us to make the most of our time so that we may grow in wisdom. O oh Lord, come back to us. How long will you delay? Because when you're going through things, I tell you, we feel that. Take pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love so that we may sing for joy to the end of our lives. 
Father, I pray that you will give us gladness in proportion to our former misery. That you're going to replace the evil years with good. Lord, I pray that we see your miracles again in our lives and in our homes and in our bodies. And Lord, not only that are we going to see your miracles again, but our children are going to see your glory working in our lives. And we're going to see your glory working in our lives. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you would show us your approval. That as we start stepping out trusting you, that you'll look down and see these changes and we'll see your approval and that you'll make our efforts successful, Lord. And Moses repeats that again and he says, yes, that you'll make our efforts successful and unite my heart to fear your name. So Heavenly Father, I pray that these principles as we move forward that we're gonna find success this time. We're going to find approval through you. That the years of pain and hurt, Lord, you're going to bring joy back into our lives and our future for those times. And that you will redeem it. And as we close, I just want to make sure that everyone in this room, real heart life change has to have God involved. The world doesn't have an answer for what happens to us, spirit, soul, and body. But God does. And it begins with our sins being forgiven. It's knowing that we're okay with God right where we're at. That he forgives us of our mistakes. And that he loves us unconditionally. And he's going to be your source moving forward in this time. And so if you're here this morning and you don't know or you're watching online and you don't know 100% that heaven is your eternal home, if you don't know that your sins, if you don't know they're forgiven, and I'll make it even real simple, if you're here and you don't know 100% you'd go to heaven if you died, then you need to pray with me. And in a second, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand and look at me if you'll pray with me. And, and the reason I do that is because the Bible tells us is those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And what you're doing is by raising your hand, you're acknowledging to heaven. I'm not gonna have you come down front, but you're, that's your symbol, symbolism of, is symbolic of you calling on him. And then once I see your hand, you can put it down. But then the Bible says that we need to call on him. So I'm going to lead you in a confession and in a prayer. And so if you're here and you say, Pastor, that's me. It's time. I need to, I'm not where I need to be and I need to get my life right with him. If you'd pray with me, would you just lift your hand up right now? No one looking around, but if that's you, awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Who else will join these? Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Thank you up there. Who else? Awesome. Thank you. This is the most important thing we do right now. This is what begins lasting change. Without God, we really don't have hardly any hope. With God, we have, we have hope and we have a chance, way more than the world's way. So now I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And church, as I lead them in a prayer, would everyone repeat this with me? So say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today and I ask for forgiveness for all my sins. I make a decision today to believe in Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior. I'm now forgiven. Heaven is my eternal home. And I'm now a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. How about a round of applause for those that were for their hands?